you know, this is Wheeling, and we both competed in the uh, Toronto Summit. Uh, we're the number one and number four winners there. We're part of the top 16 competitors that raced uh, earlier today. And we just want to talk a little bit about how we've built our model and also how we built a custom track uh, in our building. So, quick show of hands, has anybody tried to build their own physical model, physical track? No, anybody interested in? <laughs> Not you, man. Anybody interested in learning more about that? Okay. Uh, what about models? Have you guys played around with different models like waypoints, stuff like that? Yeah? Okay. So basically when you look at the models in the market, more to speak, you know, you can either use performance-based models that will reward speed, progress, other stuff that have nothing to do with the track itself. And then on the other hand, on the other side, you've got specific models that tackle waypoints that were really going to details of like, you know, if you're at this point, do this. If you're at this waypoint, do this. And either, both of these models have their pros and cons. What we're trying to explain today is something called the track, what we call track feature based. So it doesn't look at specific waypoints. It doesn't look at the performance, but it looks at some common features within the track. Now we'll explain that in a second. So we're talking about the reInvent 2018 track now. So again, performance space is going to take a long time to converge. It's going to try every you know, possible way in the action space. Uh, race line base is going to be difficult. If you've heard of race line analysis, you can look at the track and see what is the best race line that you know, a racer would take. You can't do that with deep racer because there are no brakes. You can't really take sharp rate, you know, turns. So that may not work as well. Uh, what we wanted to do is, again, take a look at this track and say, you know what? What is some common features that we can program for that would work on this track and something else? So we did see that in... Oh. Yeah, just bring it closer, I think. Oh, okay. So in this track, one of the things we noticed is a lot of straight lines. And we figured if they're on straight lines, we don't want them to zigzag. We want them to drive fast. So we had the, the idea of calculating based on waypoint slopes to determine if, if there is a straight line ahead. So um, the calculation is pretty straightforward. I, I know uh, some of you might play with the waypoints. You know you can get the closest waypoints, the one forward, the one backward. And we tried that, and we want to make take it forward. What we did is we actually calculate a step ahead of the future waypoint. So we can start with the next waypoint and go to the next next waypoint, go to the next 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 waypoint and calculate the slope between the next waypoint, the second waypoint, and the second waypoint and the third waypoint. And then you will be able to determine if it's a straight line. So basically, we, you know, when you get in your function, your reward function, you get the waypoint index, and then you are able to know which waypoints am I on, and then you just like add one, and if you're at the last one, you just like reset, and then you'll be able to know what are my next two waypoints, and then or like my next three points, and then what we do is taking a look at uh, the slope of like the first, so the first two points and then the next two points. And then if the slope is the same, then we figure like we're just going you know, through a straight line. So we're just going to reward you for accelerating or using your max speed. Um, actually, I want to mention something. So what's more is we find out that not only we can s speed up and not steer on an absolutely straight line, we can also give it a little bit of room. If it's a small curve, you can still ask it to speed up or not steer because it's almost like a straight line. So for example, you know, the slope can be zero, the slope difference can be zero, but we like put some threshold, like even if it's a slightly off, then you know, like in this, in this one, you look like this is a straight line, but this may not be a straight line around this area. So we made sure like, you know, this is also taken care of. The same here, like this is a straight line, but then this is a slight curve. So you play around with the threshold of the slope difference, and then you can still get the car to accelerate through that. Um, however, while we are using that method, we had a problem. And I, I'm, I'm sure you guys are familiar with log analysis. So we dig into log analysis 
did the uh, evaluation log analysis on our best model. It was doing uh, two out of five laps, but it was doing really, really fast. So we love it, but we want to make sure that it's doing five out of five. We look at the log analysis, we notice there's one point. It's always going out at the same point. So we dig into the waypoints and we're trying to figure out what's going on with the car? Why is it going out at the same space? There must be something wrong. Max? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So uh, how many of you guys do log analysis? Just a show of hands. Only one, two, all right. Everybody else, you don't do, I do, of course. <laughs> Everybody else just get into it, just uh, Google log analysis, the place is really cool. They're like Jupyter notebooks, there's ways to just get started with it. And you'll get all these cool graphs that shows you the evaluations, you know, with the model where it's going, all these. And this is how you can quickly see, if your model is always like failing at 33%, you do the log analysis, it's like you will quickly see like, yeah, it's failing at this point. So. We digged into this and we said, you know what, that doesn't make sense. Why is the car always just going straight at that angle? And then we, we looked into the different waypoints and we found that there is a very tiny straight line between these points. Yes, uh, we got bamboozled basically. So basically there was like a tiny straight line and the car was just based on the reward function saying, oh, straight line, it was just gonna go straight and I'm not gonna steer. So it was optimizing its reward function, just straight, going straight. So what we did is, we just added a small exclusion saying, you know what, only accelerate on straight lines if they're like longer than 0.1 meters. Like, you know, if, if it's this tiny straight line thing along the curve, then just forget about it and, you know, skip that. And, and that worked really well, yeah? Yeah, I think the straight line threshold is based on your speed as well. You have to calculate the speed of your car to make sure that if it accelerates, it's not going to go out of the track based on the lens, basically. All right. So this is just a math showing the that. Uh, just a little thing, I mean, one thing that we did with Deep Racer at, you know, my planet as we work is we both work together on the model. So, you know, I know some companies do the competitors and, you know, every person for themselves. We work together to, you know, try new ideas, do mistakes, meet weekly, uh, get feedback and, you know, do a lot of log analysis and iterate. And it has really worked well. So if you find people who are interested in Deep Racer within your company, community, competition is not always the answer. It's good, it's cool, but and you can compete, nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, at the summits, but you can always play together, you know, within your circle just to accelerate your learning. So we'll jump to the last room. So we want to want to summit. We're preparing for reInvent. The track got released early in November. We got our cars and we said we want to try it on the physical track. Nobody, according to our knowledge, maybe a couple of you know, people had this, nobody had plans for the track. The 2018 track was well, uh, well sent out, you know, there are track files, you can download them, you can print it out, people can order it from Hong Kong for like 600, 500 bucks, etc. But in 2019, we had nothing. So, yes, so instead of ordering a printed track, we decided we're going to build the track ourselves. And our colleagues had been very nice and offered to help. So what we did is we offer some rows and offer some, t uh, we bought some tapes and we bought some rows. And uh, they had this brilliant idea is we're going to use the projector because think about how long it's going to make to uh, take to make a 23 meter track. So they decided we're going to project the waypoints on the big wide wall and we're going to put our row there and draw it. It actually saved like days of times. So basically, you know, we, we got like a black mats, a black asphalt or mat that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's. And, you know, we got tape and to transfer the track into this, we just like, like Wearing said, you know, we put the projector, we got the tiles one by one and just like drew something with a chalk and then went back and like did the sticker. Now the cool thing is it's cheap. It costs us like less than 200 bucks Canadian, you know, US is even cheaper. And then it took us some time, you know, we got more of our teammates engaged, but also it's, you know, you can fold it. So we have big basement, we fold, you know, we, we spread it out, then we fold it again. You know, if the track changes, so 2019 is over, now there is a different track for 2020, we can just like take the tape out, reuse the same material. So that's another way of like, you know, really, you know, do it yourself track that can save you time and money. And that's it guys, any uh, questions? Anything interesting? No, did you like it? Did you learn something? Yeah? Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I can't shout my voice is super interesting. So, um, did you guys... Uh, <coughs> so, there basically it seems that there are in the community, there are two approaches. One is like, as you mentioned, kind of like the more uh, 
uh, actual reinforcement learning approach where you let the machine learn on its own. And you mentioned that this, that approach is uh, sometimes takes too long to converge, right? Um, do you have experience with building a, mo a model based on that heuristic that, that actually did outperform uh, compared to a, you know, kind of like a more uh, a race line r based model? We, we do. I mean, for preparing for the Invent 119 track, we actually had, a, had one specific model that was just like lit run with like a very short, concise re, you know, reward function. And it ended up doing the perfect race line virtually. Physically, it, it did not last well. I mean, we could have played with, with it and with stability, but yes, it ended up doing like well. Oh, so, so what you're saying is that um, it kind of like figured out that the optimal strategy would be the race line that you already knew of, right? Because for that specific one, we use performance and progress. So like I said, you need to finish an X amount of steps, and it just kept pushing itself until like it found that line. Race line. Right. But the problem with 2019 is also we couldn't, f we did not have much time to like find the features again. So 2018 was easy. There is a straight line. We could code for that. Uh, 2019, I don't know. Maybe if we spend more time. Yeah, I think with uh, per performance based, you also, hello, hello. Yeah, so with performance based, I think you also run a risk of if you define the right action space for it to actually explore the perfect race line. Yeah. Alice, cool. Anything else? How did it go today in top 16? Well, we, we, those, please. I'm here, so I did not qualify. Well, well, I mean, it was good. It was good. Uh, we, we did some good, but the first round I, I got into, the guy broke the world record. So, like, <laughs> like okay. And the second one, it's really, um, it's random. You know, sometimes you get a car and it does really well. Other time you get a different car, different track. Like it's all the same tracks, tracks like yesterday. Was, was six tracks like yesterday? Uh, yeah, they had two only today, I think. Only two? They, they had three open for open play, one for the two cars they had to head, and two where the actual competitions were going against. Okay. Yeah. But it was good. I think everybody who made it 64 were the top of... Unfortunately, we couldn't be there, you know, so... We you, you, did not miss, places, you did not miss much, I guess. It's, it's a tough competition out there, so... Well, we're just glad we're here, yep. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, that's a wrap. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you.